Louisville. We'll meet with them for about 15 minutes. We do have roving microphones located throughout the room. So if you would, if you do have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get our sticks your way. And we ask that you please identify yourselves and the agency that you're with. So with that, we'll get started. Do we have our first question coming from the room? And seeing none, we'll open it up here at the podium. Coach, welcome to the league, I guess, officially full time now. Thoughts about how it is that you are setting the culture for your program moving forward? I think one of the things that is vital for me to establish right away is my own personal culture, a culture that's built on success for young people. Um, you know, it's easy to talk about wins and losses. That's not the real issue that these young people need to be hearing. Um, I need a culture that's built on work ethic, that's built on character, that's built on guys that are overcoming barriers, development within themselves, both on the court and off the court. If I establish that, um, in my mind, I've succeeded without ever talking about a win or a loss. We'll go to the very back to your left. Pete Iacobelli, Associated Press. Kenny, what's it like to accept this job at your alma mater? And, you know, that must be an enormous accomplishment for you and must come with a lot of pressure as well. Uh, you're right on both. Um, the obligation that I feel for my school <clears throat> and the, the pressure to make everybody happy, it never goes away. Before I go to sleep at night, I'm thinking about it. How do I please all this whole community, this whole city, the whole state of Kentucky, um, and also please these kids and their parents? Um, that's the job that I've been given. Um, I took the job simply because of that. Um, I took the job because there's, there was a disconnect a disconnect between the community, a disconnect between former players, a disconnect between these kids. Um, if I can help in that in any shape, form, or fashion and be a vessel to connect these people and to really to make them all proud, it's not about me, it's about them. So that's, it never goes away. <laughs> Sydney, a question from the podium here. If Coach speaks to the idea of trying to bring together community, to try to get things in a different place, he's obviously dedicating himself, himself to the community. What are you doing to dedicate yourself back to him? Uh, just, you know, coming in every day, working hard for Coach, you know, so he pushes us up every day, so just coming in, working hard every day, and just trying to get better for the team. El, you've got a chance to go to Hawaii to play a little basketball. Have you ever been to Hawaii before? No, I've never been to Hawaii. So what is it that you're looking forward to most about that trip? Man, just getting out there and going to compete. That's uh, getting out of the country, something I haven't really done in my life. Just being able to go out there and have fun and compete is going to be fun. Thank you. Questions from the room for Louisville? We'll bring it right here to your right about the fourth row. Kevin Young from the three-point conversion. Um, Coach, can you talk a little bit about your, co your coaching staff as far as getting Danny Manning, also um, Nolan Smith, who are both champions? Can you talk a little bit about them and how about how you went on about that process of getting them? Uh, great question. Uh, to, to go back a little further, when I got the job, I think I had 3,000 people hit me about working for me or being a part of the staff. And as I went through it mentally, how in the world do you digest so many coaches from all facets of life, every level, NBA, college, high school, AAU, how do you digest all of that? And one thing kept sticking with me that Larry Brown said to me, the obligation of a coach is to love the people that he's coaching. And so my number one criteria, I knew I was hiring guys that were uniquely qualified for the job. 
I wanted guys that have won championships, that were winners. I wanted guys that um, could give their life to young people. But more importantly than the X's and O's and the knowledge of the game and the experience that a Nolan Smith has had or a Danny Manning or even a Josh Jameson, a Milt Wagner, a Reese Gaines, I wanted them to number one thing, you have to love kids to work for them. You got to love them. And then after you love them, really important, you have to adopt their dreams. Adopt them. Don't assume because a kid tells you out of trust, I want to be a great NBA player. Don't say that he can't do it. You adopt his dream and you give him what he needs to make that dream come true. If he falls short, that's on him. We gave 110% together. That's sort of how I went about picking the staff. Um, and I went public and said this. I believe that I have the most unique staff in the history of the college game. That does not mean we're going to win games right off the bat. That means each one of these coaches have a unique experience that they can share with young people to help them reach their goals and dreams. To me, that's a win-win. Sydney, from here at the podium, your teammate up on stage is the returning leader, leading scorer at 8.7 points per game. Who else is going to score? It's a devil's advocate question. Who else is going to bring the heat, fill the hoop this season to complement his, his season average? Uh, I think Jalen Withers uh, brings a lot to the team. Um, Bradley Hatfield. We have a lot of guys that bring a lot to the team, besides scoring and other things they can do on the court. So I feel like we have a lot of guys that can contribute to the team. Questions for Louisville from the floor? Coach, you've got seven players who are at least 6'8 and taller. Uh, in time, are we going to see more than seven players at that height? I guess, what's your recruiting strategy, and what's going to be that game style that matches up to such height? Recruiting strategy is I need high-end talent that has a high-end character. I need givers. I don't need takers. I need guys that, whether they know it or not, they bring something to their team, regardless of if they can really explain what they're bringing. For example, I go watch a player play, and I watch how the other four players relate to him, and I watch how he relates to those other four players. If there's a positive energy there, I want that player. I want a player that instinctively can make a pass and take joy when that guy he passed the two scores. I want a guy that can post up, can shoot a three, can shoot a mid-range, can make layups, can pass the ball, that can rebound the ball above the rim, can run the lane, can push the ball. <laughs> I want complete versatile basketball players that have a unique ability to fight for what they want and that are dream chasers. I'm not really looking for the good player that isn't willing to fight for his dream, who assumes it's just going to happen. That's delusional. I can't help that kid. I can only help the ones that are realistic about what they want in life. And that, those are the kids that I want to recruit. I hope I have a bunch of seven-foot guys that can play the point, the two, the three, the four, the five. <laughs> I think you have the most unique staff in the country. You have the most unique roster in the country. Yes, I have a good that roster. the case. Other questions for Louisville? We've got about five minutes left with the Cardinals. Again, from the podium, both of our student athletes, I'd like you to answer this. Coach talks about being the dream chasers. Sydney, you first. What's your dream? Uh, my dream is, is uh, to make it to the NBA and uh, take care of my family. And I feel like uh, Co Coach is doing a good job of pushing me every day and to reach my goals. So. I would say, of 
course, going to the NBA, having a great career, but most important, taking care of my family. My family, I have a family that's dependent on me, and that pushes me every day, every day to work hard and achieve my goals. Other questions for Louisville from the floor? Coach, in the game notes, or at least in the profile notes heading into the season, it speaks to the Cardinals being one of the most highly profiled programs when it comes to television. That Louisville has been on television a great deal over the last couple of decades. What does that TV exposure do for what it is you're trying to bring in uh, as being part of your program? It shines a light. It shines a light on what Louisville basketball is. You can't hide. Um, if every night or every game is pretty much on TV, the world is watching. What are they seeing? Are they seeing guys that are disjointed? Are they seeing guys that are together? Are they seeing guys that regardless of if they win or lose, they're fighting? Or are they watching guys let go of the rope? What are they watching? Are they seeing coaches that have the ability to touch a player, which is a form of love, and a player touch a coach? When a timeout happens or a referee blows a whistle, I want players coming to me and putting their arms around me, and I want to put my arms around them and say, what do you see? I want the world to see that. I want the world to see that even in the face of losing games, that you don't give up on what you're trying to accomplish, that you don't blame. In the form of winning games, I want them to see we stay the same. Every single day we are hungry and we're humble. I think that's a great way. Ah, oh, see, there we go. So one last question. We're getting ready to send you guys out the door. So to your left, second row at the end. Better late than never. Gene Gallon with the Chatham Journal. Coach, how do you incorporate your experience as a player both at the college level and at the NBA level when you're talking to your players? Do you give examples or what's your method of taking that experience and bringing in as a head coach of Louisville? Great question. Real simple. I can be delusional and be selfish and say, guys, you're playing basketball. It's just a game. That's not reality. These young men right here, you heard them say it, it's bigger than them. They are fighting for their lives. I got a bunch of kids that are on my team that are fighting for their lives. What experience is to tell them that they are fighting for their lives. Delusional is, it's just a game. You don't really have to go to class. You don't really have to pour 150% in. That's not reality. Reality is whatever happens from 18 to 23 is gonna last these young men for the rest of their lives. Don't live with regret. Pour 150% in and whatever happens, you can live with. But if you pour 75% in and your life doesn't turn out the way you're going to live with that pain. So my experience, I've been real close to that line of living with that pain. And by the grace of God, I'm sitting here and I've been able to help people because I put them first. And I want them to know that I care, I love them, and I'm coaching them out of love. There has to be a fear of failure, to know exactly what you're facing in this world. Because when it's over, this college thing is over, this gets real, real. <laughs> and that's a good note to leave on. So ladies and gentlemen, that's Louisville. Thank you, and have a great season. Thank you. Folks,